Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Hector Bones, Tim Ashman, and Johnny Hernandez. Coming up on DTNS, Nicole Lee has great ideas on easy smart home gifts to get people, even if they aren't that tech savvy. Plus, Sony makes motion capture cheap and easy. And the end of the year music streaming recaps are here. And we will admit what tops our lists. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, November 29th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redmond, I'm Sarah Lane. From San Francisco, I'm Nicole Lee. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Jen. Oh, Nicole, thank you for bringing us like an accessible, uh, not accessible so much as, as like wide ranging gift guide today. I can't wait to talk about it. Very that. wide range. Yeah. No, I wanted to, I wanted to be a thorough, you know, cover cover the gamut. It's perfect for those folks who like they went through all the Black Friday sales and they're like, I still have a couple of people on my list and I have no idea. D -d -d Nicole's going to take care of that for you. So just <laughs> hang in there. Let's start with the quick hits. Twitter updated the COVID-19 section of its transparency pages to say that, quote, effective November 23rd, 2022, Twitter is no longer enforcing the COVID-19 misleading information policy, end quote. Now, starting in 2020, Twitter began labeling posts with disputed information about COVID and removed posts that were demonstrably false. Twitter's community notes program, formerly called Birdwatch, will continue to add contextual notes to posts about COVID. Yeah, so it's up to the audience now. India's central bank announced it will extend the test of its central bank digital currency, the e-rupee, one of those CBDCs we've been telling you about forever. Uh, it's going to extend that test to retail starting December 1st. Four local banks, uh, the State Bank of India, ICICI Bank, Yes Bank, and IDFC are going to participate in this retail phase of the pilot in four cities, Mumbai, Bengaluru, Bhubaneswar, and New Delhi. More banks, cities, and customers will be added as the test goes on. The central bank began evaluating the digital currency for the wholesale market last month. So this is the expansion into retail. The UK's proposed online safety bill will be amended to remove the obligation for social platforms to take down legal but harmful content. The government states the change affects platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, is preserving free speech and giving people greater control over what they see online. UK Culture Secretary Michelle Donnellan says the amendment ensures no tech firms or future government could use the laws as license to censor legitimate views. The bill is due to return to Parliament on Monday, December 5th. Yeah, that thing's taking forever to get through. Uh, we'll see. Wall Street Journal reports around 4,000 shipping containers containing solar panels have been detained coming into U.S. ports, and more are being held up on the other end in the exporting ports in places like Vietnam and Malaysia. The delay is caused by U.S. customs agents enforcing a new law that requires that no solar panels contain parts made in China's Xinjiang region. Most panel makers are sourcing parts elsewhere, but they still have to show documentation to prove it. Wall Street Journal estimates around 23 gigawatts of solar projects have been delayed in the U.S. so far this year. Yesterday, we told you about OpenAI's algorithm that could play Minecraft. Today, we have news of NVIDIA's Mind Dojo. That's the algorithm that won the company an Outstanding Dataset and Benchmark Paper Award at the Neural Information Processing Systems Conference. A user can write in natural language what it wants Mind Dojo to do, like build a portal and then enter it, and Mind Dojo can execute it in a game. What kind of portal, though? I mean, you got to be cool specific. cool one. You know, Nether Portal, something like that. All something right. Like that. Yeah. The AIs, they're just going to be playing all the games soon. All right. Uh, we <laughs> will then become virtual avatars. We might. Uh, getting closer than ever. So Sony has launched a motion capture project called Mocopi using six motion tracker... Uh, tracking sensors that you wear on your wrist, your ankles, your head, your waist, or your hip, basically tracking your body for videos or maybe to make a virtual avatar that moves a lot like you move. The sensors are small. They're smartwatch sized devices. They fit on a charging case the size of a large smartphone case. The sensors connect to a smartphone running an app from Sony. 
which then records movement data in BVH format and can be exported as a recorded MP4 video. So you can use the app's avatars or you can use your own VRM avatars if you so desire. You kind of have the choice there. The app can also transfer motion data to a PC in real time using Unity, Autodesk's Motion Builder, some of you are very familiar with both, might be kind of exciting there. An SDK will come out December 15th to let developers integrate Mokopi data to apps. Reservations will begin in Japan in mid-December for an on-sale date in late January. Mycopi will sell for, and this is actually, I think, a very important part of this if you're excited about it, for uh, 49,500 yen, which is approximately... 360 US dollars. Yeah. So under $500, you can do mocap uh, for an indie film. Uh, it, or, or if you're a VTuber, it's going to bring down the yeah. complexity yeah. of your system. Uh, I think this is probably a bigger deal than people are making it. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a beginning to look like CES kind of project, right? It's like, oh, it's it's only available in Japan. Oh, and 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 it's not a PlayStation from Sony, so I can't hook it up to my games. But this is this is going to make motion capture accessible in a way that it hasn't been. And whenever we see things like audio recording, video recording, et cetera, you know, graphics uh, become more accessible, you start to see an explosion of new kinds of content. And I think the important the, the thing that, that popped up to me as I was watching the video is that it also seems very user-friendly, like, uh -huh. it, like it, look, it looks very attractive, like, e like easy, easy enough to use, it looks like, from the, from the video. Like, it's all kind of clearly laid out, like, this is for the head, this is for the ears, and this mm -hmm. is for the you know, the, the arms and legs and so forth. And um, if it's easy to use and it's affordable, that's enough, I think. People, People are going to find all kinds of weird, unexpected things to do yeah. with this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my first reaction was like, oh, okay, the avatar stuff I can get. Definitely yeah. get that. You, you know, like, ooh, metaverse tool. Yeah. But then I was like, <laughs> okay, but yeah, let's think about how this was... I don't know how many years, uh, it wasn't that many years ago that people were like, this whole movie was shot on an iPhone, you know, or a smartphone. I feel like this is, it's sort of, it's the next version of, hey, you can do this with pretty cheap software. Uh, d uh, you know, if, if you compare this to like going to some motion capture yeah. studio not that long ago, <laughs> like it's not going to be $360, guys. Yeah. And, and and don't get me wrong, uh, it's going to come out and people are immediately, as soon as they get over the excitement, critique how it's not as good as the, you know, the, the professional things and, and yeah. start like pushing for improvements to make it smoother. And those improvements are going to come and eventually people are going to complain that, oh, I have to attach six things. I just want one <laughs> thing. And then there's going to be a development. <laughs> like, that's just the way this stuff goes. But we're at a point where this is a thing you cannot do easily right now. And this, this implementation of the technology uh, is uh, probably going to democratize it a little. And I think that's significant. Yeah. And even, I, even, I will even, no even longer be appearing on DTNS as me. I will <laughs> be an avatar as soon as I get I mean, oh, this, this is not the weirdest idea. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, at least just to give it a shot. I'd do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We might have to get one of these once they're, out, once they're available. <laughs> Uh, well, if you're concerned about streaming music, uh, a lot of people are like, ah, you know, I use streaming music. It's so convenient. But is it fair to the artists? Uh, am I pay overpaying? Uh, am I getting ripped off? We have some good news. The UK Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, published its final report on its market study of music and streaming services. Now, the CMA's job is to find antitrust stuff. They, If they have a bias, it's towards finding something is wrong. And they didn't find anything wrong. The CMA found that music prices have fallen by 20% as a result of competition in the music market because you have multiple good services. And while it did find that major artists got the most money, that seemed to be because of us. We're streaming 60% of our music from 0.4% of the top artists. The CMA found no evidence of excessive profits. Average royalty rates have actually risen for artists from 19.7% in 2012 to 23.3% in 2021, and for music writers from 8% in 2008 to 15% in 2021. So with that in mind, 
Let's talk about the end of your music promotions coming from the three biggest streaming music providers. Yeah, so there's Apple, of course. Apple seems to be first out of the gate with Apple Music Replay. You can find it at replay.music.apple.com. You can sort of search for it online or perhaps find it in your iOS app, although I couldn't. The company redesigned it this year to look a little better. Gives you your top song, your top artist, top album, along with total minutes listened. If you're wondering how much you listen to music, and some more kind of fun info. You got some chart views. You have some top playlists. You can also share your highlight reel and images with your stats, which is very much the point of all of this. It's an easy social media post type feature. YouTube also announced its 2022 recap feature. You get to that. Uh, supposedly by searching 2022 recap, either in YouTube music or the main YouTube mobile app seems to be still rolling out. So you might have to wait for it to show up. Uh, it shows you your most watched or listened to artists, songs, videos, and playlists highlights artists. You may have discovered before they got big, kind of make you feel like you're an insider and has a music personality feature, which tells you your music vibe. It can integrate with Google <laughs> Photos as well. So in, when you want to share your results, you can integrate your own photos into those shareable versions. If only someone would tell me what my music vibe is. Well, YouTube <laughs> would really is there help me you. out. Yeah, yeah, it is. Of course, the big one is Spotify's Wrapped, which is still to come probably shortly after the 1st of December. It was just last year where I was like, what is Wrapped Day? What is everybody talking about? It's a big deal. In the meantime, developer Anshu and Sean Taboo created an app called InstaFest. If you authorize it to view your Spotify account, it'll take your listening data and create a kind of cool three-day Coachella-like festival poster with headliners based on your most played artists, which is very cute. I've seen it passed around quite a bit, maybe a little too much, <laughs> Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> but, but all that aside, time for everybody to spill. What are our top artists? Who's in our play fest? All right. You want me to go first? Yep, go ahead. Uh, what would you like to know? You want top album, artist, or song? Do you want to go like number three on one of those lists? What are you, what are you, what are you looking for? Well, Tom, um, what, what's your top album of the year? My top album is Anti-Fragile by La Seraphim. Okay. Okay. Um, and you're using Apple Music. Yes, and I'm using. That's right. I'm using Apple Music Replay because. And that's Nicole, where I you're to also an Apple Music user. As well. Yeah, you know. Uh, so a couple of things that I have to say, like the there, like Spotify shows it all in the app, but Apple Music for some reason kicks you kicks you to this to this website. Yeah. Even, if, even if you go through the app, it makes you go to the website. So I mean that's different. Um, also, like I guess I don't listen to that much music. It's only like three thousand minutes versus like all these other people that have like tens of thousands of minutes um but uh yeah so like the top song on my list is taylor swift midnights ah, so. i mean very, yeah very of the moment uh, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah yeah indeed current trend sarah what you know, about you what what's, all right. what's your top artist top artist is kendrick lamar he had an album out this year so you know that obviously helps but yeah. like i would listen to him anyway um I'm trying to go back to something that shows me the uh, minutes listened because, Nicole, I'm kind of with you because of podcasts. My yes. music listening is sort of at an all-time low. And yeah. it's not because I don't like music. I really do. Mostly yeah. if I'm in my car. I'm like, oh, it's music time. Yes, but in the car, in the car where, which doesn't track. <laughs> Which, exactly. Well, which, you know, or, my, or, my you know, if you're using it. CarPlay, it would. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I don't. But use otherwise, it. yeah, I, I feel like I'm like, wow, I would have been like way in like the twenty thousand hours, you know. I'm like, yeah. Eh, yeah. I'm kind of listening to podcasts more. Yeah, that I would actually be a better metric for me. My honestly. minutes yeah. were like thirteen thousand or something. That's more than me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. I think I, I would have listened to more. A lot of this is uh, music that I play prior to It's a Thing going live because I, I I just put music you on. To, you have to know. Just, yeah. Oh, right. it just get you in the mood. Yeah. Yeah. It just it make sure people know that the Discord stream is, is working without me I having mean, to talk to them. This isn't really, you know, related to, you know, top artists of story or, or of, of, of songs and albums uh, per se, but... A few years ago, I remember a friend saying, oh, Sarah, like, I can't even run to music anymore, you know, because he liked to run, jog. And I was like, I can't even imagine not, not running to music. I would just, you know, I wouldn't be able to, like, keep a pace. 
And now I can't listen to music while I'm running. Oh, you're there. Are you a podcast yeah. listener when you I've run? Gone, yeah. Like it's yeah. like, podcast I need to like, listening. I need to get into a story and then mm-hmm. I have Welcome. more fun. Welcome. Now you understand. <laughs> Yes, I, I do. I was not yeah. that friend. This way, she was not subtweeting me. No, like, no, I, I did. was a different person. <laughs> Certainly not. And you know, I, I, I wouldn't be the only person to either. I'm the kind of person that will listen to the same podcast episode over and over and over again because I like really? it so much. Oh, yeah. that's yes. interesting. I'm, 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 never, I'm, the, I'm that. I don't person. know that I've ever done that. I am that person. Huh. Oh, wow. that's kind of cool. Yeah. But that's sort of you know, it's like that comfort movie that you watch yep. every yeah. season. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> We highly encourage everyone to <coughs> listen to this episode of Daily Tech News Show <laughs> as many well, times as you want. Uh, and then tell us about it on social media. You can get in touch with the DTNS audience on Twitter at DTNS Show, on TikTok at Daily Tech News Show, and on Instagram at DTNS Picks. That's DTNS P I X. Well, Roger Chang has been doing yeoman's work, putting together folks to tell us about gift guides this year. We've covered gift ideas for games with Trisha Hirschberger, home theater with Patrick Norton, TVs with Robert Heron. But we're past Black Friday now, and you may have a few people on your list that you're having a hard time figuring out. If they have a home, we may be able to help you. Nicole has been looking at options for people who might not even be that tech savvy, but would appreciate a few things to make their homes a little smarter. Uh, Nicole, how did you come about these picks? Yeah, so I wanted to make these picks based on a wide range of, I guess, people in your life. So I have a pick for the cook in your life. Mm. I have a pick for, um, for example, like, you know, I, I think everyone should have an air purifier these days because, you know, pollution and stuff like that. So I have a recommendation for like a smarter air purifier, for example. Okay. And um, I have a couple of other picks for just, I think, like you said, everyone has a home. Everyone has uh, electricity. Well, most everyone has electricity and outlets and things like that. So these are just small little ideas that will just make things a little smarter, a little um, more streamlined in your home. Excellent. Well, what are we yeah. starting with? Yeah, so the first thing on my list here is a smart outlet. So the easiest way to smarten up any home is to get one of these little smart outlets. And they're very inexpensive. I think you could get like $24 for four or something like that. Um, so these, these little things, any appliance that you plug into it can instantly be like a smart appliance. You just what, All you have to do is just like connect the outlet to like your phone through an app and then all of a sudden like if you can um plug in like your coffee maker to the smart outlet all of a sudden your coffee maker which mm. wasn't smart before is like a smart coffee maker now and you can program it to come on at like, a certain time in the morning which uh-huh. is very cool what i use it for every christmas i plug my christmas tree lights I to a smart thing. outlet i do it with this exactly this smart plug that you're showing here i did it like this weekend yeah <laughs> yeah and it's super easy. So now that I can just like, you know, with an app or you can just like say, hey, Google or you know, the Amazon option. And then um, you can say, oh, turn off, turn on the Christmas lights, turn off Christmas lights. It's so easy. And you can even like have it, tie, have it come on like only certain times a day, have it turn off certain times a day. So it's super easy. And um, I, I mean, definitely for anybody I feel like who, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the, uh, the Hue hub you know, ecosystem, but it's like, if you don't have that built out, this works the same way in a pinch. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like you said, like if someone doesn't, doesn't have any smart, anything in their home, get one of these things. It's like super, you know, low stakes. All right. What if they, what if you want to get them into the Hue family? You mentioned Hue, speaking of the Philips Hues, the other thing, if you want to spend a little bit more money, like build it to really build out a whole like smart lighting system. I love the Philips Hue system. This is one of my favorite, like smart light, uh, smart light bulb systems. Um, I especially recommend the Philips LED smart bulb starter kit because it has like the multicolor bulbs. I mean, you can get they can get the, just the white color, which is fine. But I love the multicolor ones because you can set like you know millions of colors to a room, so you can like warm, moody lighting for like a cozy night in, or like rainbows for parties <laughs> or whatever you want. Um, the companion app lets you create timers so that. For example, or, or routines as well. So, for example, you can set it so that the lights will gradually turn on in the morning to mm-hmm. wake you up, like a sunrise alarm. For example, I do I do this every night because uh, well, I'm because I'm a hue person. From eleven to eleven twenty, yeah. the lights start going down. Like if you're not already asleep, sir, you better get ready. 
And it's really <laughs> helpful. It's 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 a good way to like sort of lull you to sleep or wake you up, depending on how you want yeah. to set that routine. And I also really like like turning it on when I'm on vacation. When we were both on vacation, I'll turn it on. And I mean, I don't know if it really helps per se, but it sort of simulates, oh, someone in the house or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know if it, it you know, <laughs> warrants robbers or something like that, but maybe it does, right? So, um, and I think the also the, the addition of, a, of a, the, the hub, the hub itself, you could have like 50 lights can connect up to like a single Hue hub. So yeah. you can really outfit your entire house with like, and, and uh, yes, so matter is going to make that hub less necessary in the future. But for the time being, true. it's going to make it easier. And that's one of the things we're talking about. Uh, what about the thing that actually just showed up at my sister's house? Uh, I hope she's not watching uh, as a present uh, minutes ago, because I definitely bought this for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, it, okay, sorry, I'm looking at the list here. Uh, yeah, so yes, robot vacuums. Um Will they be as efficient as like an actual vacuum? Probably not, but they do help out for like the occasional mid sort of like in between cleaning sessions kind of a kind of a test. So my favorite robot vacuum is the iRobot Roomba 694. And I like it because it's kind of afford it's fairly affordable for a robot vacuum. And it works great. Like it really does suck up everything. And it's um the the app is really good. The it's really easy to use. Even even if you don't really aren't it super tech savvy, the the app is really easy to use. You can program it to like sweep certain parts of your house. Um, it's connected to the your Wi Fi network. You can you can create a cleaning schedule for certain day. So for example, like in the morning when you're when no one's in or when, or at night. And um, also the battery life on this uh, thing is actually pretty decent, about 45 minutes to, I think, 90 minutes, depending on how hard you, you, it, it works it. So, um, yeah, I re definitely recommend it. I don't have this latest uh, Roomba version, but the Roomba has changed my life, truly. <laughs> You know, and it's exactly like you described, Nicole. It's it doesn't replace a real deep clean. Yeah. But for kind of like every day, especially people who have kids or pets or yeah. I don't know, you just have a dusty house or something. Boy, does it make a difference because otherwise, you you know, you'd feel like you need to be vacuuming every day and you spend less time, time cleaning. I, I, I you really, really do. do you so. re yeah. or, or like more time. <laughs> it's like automated <laughs> robots and warehouses. You spend more time <laughs> doing the things that you were supposed to do in the first place. Now I, yeah. I have a Koei uh, air purifier, which I know Nicole, you at least used uh, to I have, did. but you're, you're recommending a smarter one than that. So I have both. I have the Koei and I also the, have this one called the Mila air purifier. This is like deluxe luxury air purifier, which, you know, like, depending on how you want to, spend your money but i really like it and i think if you if you have someone who like, who's like really nerdy and into like statistics and like factual data about the air content in their house like they will love this um it gives you all this data of like how much like particulate matter is in your air and like carbon and and it's all these sensors too it will tell you like what the level of carbon monoxide is, is in your home, which is very important, by the way. Hmm. Um, the VOC level, in your, uh, volatile organic compounds, VOC level in your home. How humid your home is was also very important, actually, for like mold, mildew, mold and mildew reasons. Um, and I love this Mila air purifier because it can, you, you have the option of picking out from several uh, filter options. So the basic one is like the basic breather filter. So this, these are the filters you, you sort of buy with the air purifier. Um, there are other filters, for, exa for example, like there are filters for pet lovers. So if, a, if, mm -hmm. if, you have, if you have a cat or a dog, you can get like special filters that will really filter out like stink and like odor, which is definitely a problem if you have pets. Uh, there's also a specific filter if you're if you have someone in your home was really allergic, like very high uh, allergy yeah. levels, for example. So they have filters, like very strong filters for those specific use cases. I also really like they have um, tons and tons of customization options. So there is something called a housekeeping mode that will just turn on like 100% full blast and it'd be very noisy, but that's assuming that no one's home, uh -huh. right? There's also a sleep mode, which will turn will turn the lights that turn the speeds off super low. It will still it will still continue running, but it's like sort of like okay, everyone's sleeping. I'm gonna I'm gonna be not as powerful uh -huh. at this this time of night. Uh -huh. kind of it's also it, 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 it's even like, 
Yeah. Yes. There's even a white noise option um, mm. that would just like turn on at a certain level that you it will turn up the white noise to help you sleep. Well, some I people guess. do white noise generators, so yeah, two birds with one stone there. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm a white noise fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on an airplane, hundred percent. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm really this into this air purifier. But... It is it is a little more and more expensive, but if you okay, if you like how if much you have someone you like who likes data and like tech and all this like information, I do like it a lot. All right, how much are we talking about? It's like two seventy. Two seventy. All right. All right. So it's a, le- it's a little less bit. than a Mokopi. Still. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we're we're going to talk more about this in Good Day Internet, but just tell us the one for the cook, uh, real quickly. Oh yeah. Sorry. This is the Anova Net Anova Precision Cooker Nano. This is the sous vide cooker everyone recommends, and I do think it's if you want perfectly medium rare steak, you want perfectly done burgers and chicken breasts and eggs. You can make yogurt in it even. Um, you use an app, you stick the, you know, stick the sous vide cookers in water and you'll cook that food to perfection. Fantastic. Thank you, Nicole, for these. And of course, we'll have links to all of them uh, in the show notes at dailytechnewsshow.com. Would you like to tell us about the advances in urinals, Sarah? Tom, I, you know, it's not every day I would say, indeed I do, but today is that day. Scientists at the University of Waterloo have taken on a very important research project, and I'm not, I'm not even being cheeky here. It's designing the optimal splash-free urinal they call the Nautiloo. Waterloo's Xiao Pan told New Scientist, I think most of us have been a little inattentive at our post. Look down to find we were wearing speckled pants. Nobody likes having pee everywhere, so why not just create a urinal where splatter is extremely unlikely? End quote. To that I say, okay. The team presented this important research, which indeed is, because who wants to have pee on their shoes, during last week's American Physical Society meeting on fluid dynamics in Indianapolis, Indiana. Pan's design encourages the optimal angle to avoid splashback something he discovered with computer modeling, but also happens to match something you might be familiar with. That's that 30 degree angle that male dogs often achieve when they lift their legs to do their business. Pan and his team experimented with dyed fluids, sprayed on jets, varying speeds, several distinct urinal designs made of dense epoxy covered foam to achieve their findings. The curved Nautilus shell structure of the Nautiloo cut splash back almost to zero. Wow. Now, if you're saying, all right, well, what do they know? Pan is a former graduate student of Tad Truscott, a mechanical engineer who founded the Splash Lab at Utah State University. It was formerly at Brigham Young. That's where it is now. But back in 2018, the Splash Lab designed the Orchid, an attachment designed to, I'm sorry, I just didn't want to get through this without laughing, designed to reduce spillage in sample collecting cups, which could lead to, lead to devices that would let perhaps people of all genders pee while standing up. Well, if you don't, if you can't pee while standing up already, <laughs> I, that, why are you dancing around it? Well, you know, if you can't, kinda... if you can't pee while standing up already, then this would let you do that. I mean, I'm probably capable of it. I just have never tried. This would be make it easier. I think. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, this is uh, this is all good. Uh, this is all good technology <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I know it's like, ha ha, we're talking about pee, but this is like really cool. It's like, like the, just the fact that there was uh, an American Physical Society meeting on fluid dynamics recently, as of last week, um, where, you know, where people talk about things like this, I think is really cool. It's important that someone is talking about it. That's what I, that's what I yeah. say. And thank you, scientists at what I will now call the Lou, the University of Waterloo. <laughs> <sighs> it's good stuff it's good stuff all right let's check out the bell bag <laughs> let's do it bill wrote in uh we had a conversation about vinfast a new ev company uh new-ish coming out of vietnam um and making some inroads in the u.s bill writes in the most interesting thing about vinmas to me besides the fact that they are already shipping is the fact that they got the design firm pin and farina on board that's a big deal it explains why they're quite attractive he means you know to look at them. Can't wait to see the interiors. Pininfarina designed so many really amazing cars, says Bill. Ferrari Testarossa, 550 Maranello, Alpha Spider, Velot, 
Porsche. It's a long and distinguished list of beautiful cars. I can't wait to see what they do next. Yeah, Bill, no, that makes sense. Uh, when when you put it that way, like, oh, a Ferrari Testarossa uh, was designed by the same people who designed the VinFast electric vehicle. No wonder it looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, huh. indeed. Well, thanks, everybody who writes in. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com is where to send that email. And also thanks to you, Nicole Lee. Uh, great gift guide and just great to see you in general. Let folks know where they can keep up with the rest of your work. Yeah, so uh, with um, various uh, – so you can, you can go on Twitter.com slash Nicole. You can see all my my uh, my information there. Um, I also have a link tree, the link tree uh, slash Nicole Nerd. You can see all my different links there. I do have uh, a blog that I'm working on um, that will be coming soon. And uh, I'll link them all in that little page. You, you'll, you'll see it when it's ready to go. Very cool. Well, we're glad to have you. We also have a brand new boss to thank. That boss's name is Robert. Robert just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you, Robert. Robert is part of the the wave. I call it a, a, a boss wave because it's a wave of mm. bosses that have been joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTNS. Well done, Robert. You Speaking rock. of patrons, stick around for our extended show, Good Day Internet. We talk about all the things. A lot of it is DTNS and a lot of it is just food. You can catch the show live, though, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Thanks to everybody who joins us live. Always good to have you. We'll be back again doing all with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>